Let me show you a magic trick. This is a 5 volt supply. This is a 555 timer. The NE555P. This is a chip based on BJTs. And I've just got it set up so I can turn its output high and low. Low is of course 0 volts, and high is 4.38. Now generally that's plenty, but sometimes it's not. What can we do about this? Well you're familiar with the concept of a pull-up resistor, right? So what if I take a 10K resistor between the positive rail and stick it on here? But what will that do, you say? That's nonsense. A pull-up or pull-down resistor is for a floating input or output. It's not going to do anything to a signal, it's just going to waste power. That's actually true. Then explain this. Why is my high 4.95 volts now? Why is my low 0.01? Something strange. Can we go higher? What if instead of a 10K resistor, I have a 3 resistor, as in 3.3 ohms? Excellent! 4.99 volts, sometimes the full 5. What about the low? Oh, the low is 3.48 volts with 207 milliamps going through the chip. Oops! But hold on now. Here's a 4.38 volt signal, exactly the same as the op amp was putting out. Let's measure that instead. 4.38 volts and 0 volts. So what if I put the 10K pull-up resistor on that? We have 4.38 volts and we have 0 volts. Nothing happened, which is what we would have expected. What about the 3 ohm resistor? Hey, look at that. The 3 ohm resistor is giving us 4.96 high. It's not 4.99 like we were getting on the timer, but it's still near the rail. It's even within the CMOS range. What about low? Low is 0.46 volts on the meter, and the supply is pegging at 2.5 volts putting out 300 milliamps because that's the limit I've set. So what in the world? So you know how I said, if you have two voltages and you put a resistor in parallel between them like this, nothing happens? That's not true. There's resistances everywhere, and this actually forms a parallel voltage divider with them. This is why multimeters have high impedance, so that they don't really affect the circuit that they're touching. In my second example, where I just had the 4.38 coming from my power supply, there really was almost no resistance. The power supply has incredibly low output impedance, basically zero. The wires have micro-ohms or milli-ohms. So the resistor was pretty much doing everything, and the ratio between them, this 10k ohm resistor ended up being immensely high impedance in comparison. The 3 ohm, not so much. But a chip that's based on something called TTL, a chip that's built with BJTs, that sort of thing, it's common for that kind of chip to have an asymmetric impedance on its output. In other words, it's better at sinking current into itself than putting current out of itself. That's not to say that the current is limited. That chip, as you could see, can handle 200 milliamps in both directions. It can actually source a whole lot of current, but there is still more output impedance than input impedance. When the chip's output is high, it is expecting to source current. It's putting out the rail or as close as it can get to it, so a load connected to ground and so forth. But what you have here is indeed a voltage divider because you have effectively the output impedance there and the pull-up resistor there. And there is a sweet spot, the value matters. If this pull-up resistor is too high, then it's not going to work. You're going to still get that 4.38 volts or something between there and the rail. But if you bring this resistor down far enough, then it basically takes over the duty of supplying current to the load. Whether the load is high impedance or not, this load could be giga ohms or more, but it's still a ratio between them. So you have higher output impedance and a lower resistor here, so your 4.38 volts here loses to the 4.99 volts there, and so it actually works as a pull-up resistor. When the chip's output is low, it's expecting to take current into itself, and in this case, the sinking output impedance, the impedance of current going in, is much lower as a ratio. So this same resistor is less effective. The ratio of this one to this one is much higher when it's going in, so 
it's higher impedance, it's less effective. As a voltage divider, the zero wins. You'll notice it did go up to 0 0.01 from 0, 0.00 with the 10K resistor. That's what it is. It's still having an effect. It's bringing up the low a tiny bit. When I did the 3 ohm resistor, it brought the low up to like, what was it, 3 volts or something? Then 3 ohms is way less than the output impedance, even sinking in so it starts winning and it brings the voltage up that's what's going on here this is a mystery that's been months way back in the day i did a video on some of these chips and i saw the data sheet said to do this the data sheet for the 555 ne555p says to have this resistor they don't even say what it's for it's just you're expected to know and i expressed that i had no idea what was going on in the video and some of my viewers tried to explain it to me but i did not understand but since then i have learned and i have learned about ttl to cmos conversion i've said before that you have a voltage range, let's say 0 volts to 5 volts, where you've got low, high, and unknown, the indeterminate range. For TTL, the low starts at 0.8 volts, and the high starts at 2.0 volts, and some chips will not put out much more than 2.0 volts. Now, many modern chips that are based on TTL, based on BJTs, will still go as close to the rail as they can. Like this timer puts out 4.3 some, 4.38, with a 5 volt supply, but still, the point is, as long as it's over 2, it's working. CMOS, the one we're used to for normal computers, is something like 0.05 volts here and 4.95 volts here. It's expecting basically the rail with a tiny smidgen off, a very tight window. However, most CMOS chips, most chips in general, really, follow the proper policy. When you're designing anything, this includes software. You should be liberal in what you accept and conservative in what you generate. So you should accept and handle malformed input, but you should be very careful about putting out the correct output. So a CMOS chip is going to basically put out the rails as close as it possibly can, but as we've seen, you can plug, you know, a 3.3, 3.5 volt signal right into a microcontroller pin on an Arduino Uno, and it's going to read consistently high. It's not even in the dangerous range. So generally speaking, if you have a TTL chip designed for these levels, and you plug them into a CMOS chip designed for those levels, it's still going to work just fine. And that's why we usually don't bother. But sometimes we want to bother. Sometimes we want to be sure. If for no other reason, then we're doing a project where we need a nice, clean 0 volt, 5 volt square wave, or I should say want. So that's where this comes from, is from interfacing TTL to CMOS, which we generally don't have to do anymore, but we did back in the day. Or they did. I'm a Johnny come lately, you might say. And just going back to this, to emphasize that it was the impedance doing this, acting as a voltage divider with that resistor, that's why the power supply, with basically no resistance, we'll just call it zero. In that case, no matter what value this is, pretty much this dominates because it's less than an ohm. Once we got down to 3 ohms, less than an ohm is still not terribly small. In order to get the voltage to rise at all, in order to have this acting as a pull-up resistor, I had to bring the resistance down so low that I was blowing through my power supply because I was basically shorting it out. And that's the magic finally solved after all these months. Thank you to my viewers back then, and thank you to Google now. So I hope you found this interesting, and with that, I'll be seeing you.